You were born with individual strengths and a unique purpose. Don't let fears, false beliefs, or life's happenings diminish your influence. It's time to live and lead for impact. Host Kirsten Ross, expert of transformation, will help you defeat the drama and overcome the trauma that can stop you in your tracks. You'll gain focus, find confidence, and take bold action. Unleash passionate, purposeful you. Let's go. Welcome to Live and Lead for Impact. I'm Kirsten Ross Fogel, and I'm so grateful that you're here today. I've got a wonderful guest. You're going to love what she's got to share. We're going to talk, I'm imagining, social media. So I have Francine Sinclair, and she's the founder of Francine Sinclair Social Media. She's a social media strategist who works with small business owners aged 40 years and up. She helps her clients on average get 10 times more engagement, visibility, and leads from their efforts on social media. You can find her at FrancineSinclair.com. So welcome, Francine. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for joining me today. And, um, you know, before we forget, too, you can find her. She has an awesome, if you're on Clubhouse, she has an awesome new club that is growing like crazy called, tell me the name again, Woman Entrepreneurs 40 Plus. Isn't that awesome? And she just did a 24-hour launch. She had someone help take over the reins for four hours while she slept. So maybe we'll talk a little bit about that too. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> so, uh, so tell me a little bit about your work and what impact are you working to make in this world? Yeah, well, you know, the work that I do, I really specialize on working with entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, small business owners, however you want to call it, who are 40 years and older, not necessarily only women. I also love working with men. And the reason why I decided to niche down into that demographic is because, of course, myself, I'm 40 years and older. <laughs> and, um, you know, I found when I decided to start working on social media, before I, I was working, officially working on it, I used to use it for friends and family, right? And when I decided to use it for business, I realized that people in my generation and older, we tend to kind of use it a little bit differently than younger people. Um, and there's something about, there's some truth about being a digital native versus a digital immigrant like we are. Um, we didn't grow up with social media. So this concept about being vulnerable out in public in writing, you know, what the entire world can see what you're posting and this idea of putting your whole life out there and just how to, to be able to show, be your real self on social media fell, feels and tends to feel kind of strange to us because you got to remember back when we were growing up, it, I mean, or when we were already grown up, I guess, when the internet started, meeting people online was kind of weird, right? And now it's not weird anymore. And so I help, what I help my clients do is to be able to use social media in a way that they know they don't have to do what younger people are doing. It just has to be, feel good to them. So this idea of getting exposure and visibility without being exposed is very appealing, but also how to be able to, to, to not just post on social media, right? And get that visibility, but what to do in order to turn those posts and those connections into leads and to sales eventually, right? So that's what I focus on. And I love, you know, holding people by the hand in order to get them comfortable with social media. I love that because, I mean, I, I too am in that. Actually, I think you could call me in the 40 plus, 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 but, <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's difficult finding that ba balance that feels comfortable of really like putting it all out there and sharing versus, and then making sure that it feels authentic, like authentic sharing, not, uh, yeah. you know, the vulnerability, the sharing, the authenticity. Yeah. And where do you, where do you draw the line and, and all of those kinds of things? Yeah. So I think that's great that you're helping people find that balance that works for them. Yeah. 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 So tell me, um, thinking back to some of your clients, what's one impact that you can share 
that really fuels your passion. Because, you know, as an entrepreneur, I know like we all have those tough days and it's so Mm -hmm. helpful to be Mm -hmm. fueled with passion at that time. So what's one great story of impact that you've made that you kind of tap back to to increase your motivation? Absolutely. Well, I can think back to a client of mine who is in the finance area and, um, you know, as a gentleman, and he was using social media. I guess he was used to Twitter. So when he was posting on Facebook, because his, his ideal client, he determined that is on Facebook, right? And so he was using it very much like Twitter. And when we, when I consulted with him, I'm like, yes, um, you know, the, the audience that you're trying to reach, he's trying to reach, you know, women specifically in a certain age group, like the audience that you're trying to reach. Well, first of all, Facebook is not Twitter. Twitter are usually short messages, not a whole lot of visuals. And you have to be a bit more, what I say, um, graphic, a, a little, write a little bit more, explain things more because people don't use Facebook the same way Twitter. Um, they use Twitter. and 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 his ideal audience was definitely not on Twitter. Well, not to say completely not on Twitter, but usually they're not on Twitter. So um, one impact was that I got, I was able to repurpose his content that he already had in different formats and then start connecting with his ideal audience. He had a lot of people that he was friends with on Facebook that were in no way, shape or form his ideal audience. So getting him to clean out all of that and then starting to connect and vetting those people that we request as friends or that we accept as friends, right? And then not only that, you don't just post and go. You When you post, you have to engage with people, right? Yeah. So, so what was the, so I'm looking for that feel good, not so much the actions that you had him Mm -hmm. take, but that feel good. So for me, I mean, when I look back to times that I was brought to tears working with family businesses, because, you know, maybe they weren't even having Thanksgiving anymore. Uh, the, you know, when the family and business collided, the conflict escalated. And Mm -hmm. so I can think back to specific times where I literally, you know, brings tears. And those are the stories I'm looking for. Do you have one that, I mean, you didn't have to cry, but, (laughs) but like, what's the story of the impact ultimately that happened? You know, so for me, it's not what I did, but like the, you know, bringing family together, feeling, well, just the, the, the impact. Yeah. The impact. What did it do for him? Well, seeing that he can actually connect with people and actually build relationships that lead to sales instead of just posting, 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 and not really having that connection. So posting, building connections with people, because even though they're virtual, they are real people. And then from there, you, you once you build those relationships, you get sales, you know? So that was the impact of turning something that was just completely not working to, for him into something that actually became, started to feel good to him because he was actually getting a result and making new friends. <laughs> So it doesn't make me cry because I don't cry easily, but just making people enjoy social media where before it was just like a drag because they see a result, several results, and not only the money side of it, but also relationship. Yeah. So that's what I love. Like, that's what I mean by those stories that fuel my passion. So it's, you know, maybe the business turned around and where they thought they were going to have to close their doors, uh, you know. They, they didn't. And not only did they not have to close their doors, the value of the, the business grew and then they ended up opting out and selling and for a much higher price, you know, those kinds of things. So like the outcomes that, that you've helped deliver. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, he was about to give up on social media altogether. He didn't think it worked. And now he's an advocate. <laughs> and so, you know, it has made a, def- a, a definite impact on his bottom line. So for me, I'm all about, you know, this, people have this idea that you can't really measure ROI on, on social media. And, and you actually can. You just have to take the appropriate steps. And it worked for him. And instead of now seeing that, so instead of just letting go of social media completely, now he's making full use of it and getting results. So that, that makes my heart sing. Great, great. So um, 
tell me, what's the biggest internal or external challenge that you've had to overcome in your business and how did you overcome it? Yeah, for me, the biggest internal challenge was the visibility for myself. I've, I've had to deal with that because um, of, you know, I, I, had I had an experience years ago back in 2007, 2008, where, you know, I was in the public light and I was, I guess, one of the first persons who, one of the first people who got trolled on social media. There was a movie that came out um, back in 2007 that was about my father, uh, my father's life. It was called American Gangster, or it is called American Gangster. Denzel Washington was- Oh my gosh, hold on. We, we, we're we flipping the switch on this. <laughs> interview. I, we need to hear more about that. Yeah, absolutely. It was inspired on my father's life. And, you know, I got all this visibility and press, even though I didn't want it, but I really didn't have a choice. Right. So I was just thrown out there. And um, I, I, you know, this idea of um, exposure and being exposed, I was completely exposed. And, you know, I, I did a lot of public speaking. I, I I I did a lot of advocacy for children of incarcerated parents, but um, the the amount of trolling and um, I guess I had a lot of good exper a lot of good things to say about what happened in a way because I was able to inspire some people, but also the negative aspects of visibility. So the idea of how you know, how you can still be visible in your niche, right? Without having to be visible to the entire world, because unfortunately, you know, nobody talks about the downsides of visibility. The more visible you are, the more chances are that you're going to run into a negative experience because not everybody out there is good, is a good person. Yeah. Not everybody, you know, out there is sane. Okay. And the more visible you, everybody wants fame and, you know, to be famous and rich. Well, I'll tell you that, that visibility, you know, the more you are out there, eh, it, it may not be what everybody wants. And I don't think people realize that. So I'm all about shining in your corner of the world, in your niche, because you can have a bigger impact there. It's better to be a big fish in a small tank than a little fish in a big tank. And so that's what that that's why I really understand my clients that fear of just putting your life out there because you don't know who's going to you know stalk you, dox you, whatever. And so um, I think I did I answer your question. <laughs> well, no, I am like floored right now. Like that is such a powerful story, and I love. So we've actually gotten to the root of like why you do what you do. So. How interesting or awesome or inspirational. Um, I would love to hear a little bit more about what happened if you're comfortable sharing. Mm -hmm. And but how awesome that you have flipped that into, you know, now I look back at your like what you do, the impact, and it's helping, you know, us older folk um <laughs> find that, you know, balance of vulnerability on social media that's comfortable in you have been through a situation where because of someone, you know, your relationship with someone else, mm -hmm. uh, you were thrown into a limelight that you didn't ask for. And so, um, how, like now I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's amazing that you're now helping people find that balance. So what are some of the experiences that happened during that time? And how long ago was this movie? I, mean, I don't this remember. Was, it, this movie came out in two, late 2007. So really 2008. 2000, you know, I went through this, I was speaking a lot, doing a lot of things, being interviewed everywhere, all over the world. And I'm like, okay, at some point, so some of the things that happened specifically to answer your question, um, you know, I would just get crazy people in my inboxes and people just, you know, finding my phone number and calling me and, mm you know, my address was, for, was out there and, you know, it, it was, and I think that it could have been worse if it were now because people are much more sophisticated. Right. Absolutely. I don't think we knew the term doxing back then. Right. Well, I, I mean, didn't know it either. I didn't know it either. I didn't know what the heck was going on. I wasn't even that active. Yeah. So, so that was, um, very scary 
caused me to just completely, at some point after about a year and a half, I wanted to withdraw. I had children. Yeah. I didn't want to be in the spotlight anymore. I completely retreated. <laughs> I didn't want anything to do with anything. I just shut down and just stayed home with my children as a stay at home mom for 13 years. I didn't want to be out there. I, I can tell you that I got it. I will have been invited to speak, you know, to be a TED speaker, do all that. And I completely rejected opportunities that people would buy, buy for, you know, opportunities that people would love to have. I just said, no, I didn't want to do it anymore because of the visibility got so out of control for me that I didn't know how to pull it back because once yeah. it's out there, you can't pull it back. You know, yeah. people are writing stuff about you on the internet. People are, it's, you know, it's crazy. People in China are writing about me on the internet. And I'm so like, so yeah, I, I, I had to take that long break and then come back now, you know, slowly and in a way that I feel like I'm in control. And with this wisdom that I acquired, no understand my clients and why it is that so many of them feel scared of this visibility and this, but you know, you, everybody talking about authenticity, vulnerability. Well, there is, that's true. You have to be yourself, but there's also something called oversharing. Yes. You know? Well, so, and I think about how like, you know, to, t to turn that phrase around a little bit. Yes, we talk about vulnerability. And I think ultimately we talk about sharing, but man, you were vulnerable. Oh yeah. And again, not by your choosing. And oh, yeah. so that wow. is so insightful to me that, um, wow. And, and the thing is like, <laughs> you know, here, most people, I'm sure your clients, like the vulnerability piece that they're talking about or the authenticity is like, you know, sharing a tiny little thing that's going on in their life. And you, like you, you have experienced to the nth degree yeah. what can yeah. happen when, yeah. and again, that vulnerability is like kind of shoved on you. And so what great off. insight you have for your clients. Yes, yes, yes. And it was, it was a terrible thing because imagine not a story that I can be proud of, of course. Can you and share quickly, would you mind? Cause honestly, I don't, I like, I'm not, I don't know this movie personally, if you're comfortable and if you don't want yeah, to, that's, that's fine. But what, who was, or, you know, what was the story? What's your dad's? So my dad, Frank Lucas, he was, let's just say the biggest drug dealer in the, in the United States in back in the late sixties, probably early seventies. And what he did was he imported um, heroin from Southeast Asia into the United States and built an empire. And um, so the story was about that and his relationship with, a, with the a law enforcement person who ultimately brought him down. And, you know, my mother was portrayed in the movie as well. I wasn't luckily, mm. but still that didn't help me because when they found out I was still... Um, and I'm not my father's only child. I, uh, my father has other children, just not with my mother, my, my, my older only uh, child, my mother's child. So um, I don't know. They just latched on to me there. And, um, and it was forced vulnerability. You know, you have to figure yeah. out. I, I really covered up. I never talked. I was a very private person. Last thing I ever wanted anybody to know was about my past. You know, I'm like, oh, that's the big skeleton in my closet. No. And then all of a sudden, boom. And the entire, and everybody I know is like, oh my God, I didn't know that about you. And I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very. <laughs> yeah. Now that you're saying it. Okay. I did see that movie. So that is ringing some bells. Um, yeah. It, it was okay. hard, really hard for me. And then you think about the impact that might happen. Your ch and my children were very young back then, luckily. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a good and a bad, it was, it was, you know, a mixed yeah. bag of feelings there. I, I mean, so I just, it really brings the question to my mind. I mean, you must have done a lot of work too, just emotionally, um, you know, no guilt. It wasn't your choices. You were young, you know, all of those kinds yeah. of things. Yeah. Because I mean, you know, luckily people understand that I, I was, yeah. I had no choice. I mean, you don't yeah. choose who your parents are. You can't choose right. what they do. 
Right. And so people were mostly interested in how I was able to, to overcome and be normal, you know, and function and all this. Yeah. It was just, and that just gave me a terrible, what they call imposter syndrome today, which I didn't know what it was back then. Uh huh. And I thought I was just crazy. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. And it's so funny um, that imposter syndrome like that is just, that's the, that's the phrase of the, I don't know, the last couple of years. I think. Yeah, it's now, but, but I felt yeah. really bad. I had yeah. it so bad because people would ask me, well, what advice could you give? And I'm like, I think, you know, I just saw bad decisions being made and I, and the consequences and I didn't want that for myself. It's not that I, you know what I mean? I, I had any secret sauce, right? It's yeah. just that, and that, you know, I just, the imposter syndrome was so overwhelming for me that I just like, oh my God, these people, who do they think they are? Uh, you know, like, I mean, who do they think I am that yeah. I am in the position to give them, yeah. you know, advice about their lives. And right. so, well, and even know. that, that's something that you have to choose yourself. Like I feel ready and healthy enough myself to share strategies with others. Like, like, let me get whole first, right? Mm -hmm. Before, and then, you know, I might never, I might never take on the responsibility of sharing strategies. <laughs> or if I will, that would be on, you know, on my timeline. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, so you've had to get good at boundaries too, I'm sure. Yeah. Um. So, you know, and, 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 and just until recently, I just started sharing my story until very recently, because uh, for, for a while I'm like, uh, you know, I want to share my story, but I don't know how, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, how do I tell people this and how do and what, you know, and so, um, it, it, it's been hard, but you know what, it's given me a lot of insight in terms of how to just like my friend Jane says, I like the cash without the flash. I'm very much the behind the scenes person. Mm. I, so I really like my clients getting those results with with the you know as much visibility as needed, but not going overboard. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, and I will say there is, and of course it's everyone. Yeah, needs to choose like what they want to share and how far and wide. Um, but there is so much power just for our own well-being even and flipping those tough things, you know, so um, in sharing. Because one, it kind of, well, for me anyway, I know, because um, I was in an abusive marriage and then I spoke as a survivor mm -hmm. and just helping to organize my thoughts mm -hmm. around what I was going to share just helped me. And I felt so empowered because, oh, good, I'm flipping the switch. The stuff that I've been through is now going to be, you know, I will hopefully be able to help others through what I've been through. And it also helps people see themselves in another person. And now they can tell their, per their story next, you know, they don't have to be the first yeah. one. Yeah. And, um, so there is so much power and inspiration, but yeah, you absolutely have to be emotionally ready to, uh, and you know, and want, you know, yeah. emotionally and have the desire and, and no good or bad. Like it's, it's, you know, there's no judgment uh, from me, trust me <laughs> in saying, you know, if you want to share your story or not, um, it, it is an absolute personal choice. Yes. And so thank goodness. The story, right. Isn't it Kristen? Because if you don't, I mean, you don't have to share every single aspect of it. Right. So that's what some people don't understand. You don't have to tell, you don't have to be an open book. Right. Mm -hmm. But you do, I think need to share your story. Because then I felt that when I wasn't, I'm hiding right. half of me. Yes. And that doesn't feel good either. Right. Because then, then it's like, well, who am I? Who am I if I'm hiding this whole aspect? And am yeah. I, you know, and, and why am I hiding that aspect? Am I, you know, do I feel bad about that aspect? That's part of me. Yeah. So it's, it, it for sure, boy, you want to talk vulnerability? Uh, yes. <laughs> But, um, and I will say like that when the first time that I shared, uh, my story to, you know, there's about 400 people and I love, be, you know, I love being in front of a crowd. I love speaking, but like, I like speaking on leadership and communication and yeah. things like that. And I was shaking in my boots because I was going to be talking about that big stuff that was mine and, 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 uh, help me like, see if this rings true to you uh -huh. also. I, well, I don't know. So 
you know, in the abuse situation, you're constantly told like you're, you know, you're a drama queen, you're making a big deal out of nothing. And all you have is your own insight to kind of look at this, you know, look at your situation. But like when you have someone telling you like, you know, you're ridiculous. Well, I was so afraid that when I shared that everyone in the audience was going to look at me and say, well, this is no big deal, (sighs) you know? So there was that element too, because, um, but ultimately, yeah, everyone was in tears and, you know, and I was like, oh, cause actually then there was the validation piece too. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, oh, it was a big deal. These things that I just shared the, le- yeah, the tiny tidbits to give an, a little bit of an illustration of what it was. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's hard. And, and in my case, it was like, I, what I feel is like, okay, people are just going to, I mean, you know, people are going to think that you, they're just going to judge me like, OK, you have these type of parents then you 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 obviously are messed up. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, your situation is so much more difficult because, yeah, you were thrust into it. Like by me, it was choice. They said, do you want to do this? And I said, yes. You know, and then they said, do you want an article? And I said, yes. But like for you, you didn't even have the choice. It was out there. And yeah, like. And people would have their own perceptions and they they probably had bits and pieces and some of the facts weren't even accurate and all that kind of stuff. Like you didn't have control over what was out there, what, you know, so it's crazy. Yeah. I didn't have a choice. Everybody was just digging and it was, it's (laughs) yeah, not not a great experience to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, oh my gosh, to me, this is like the fact that the you're doing the work that you're doing, I am so much, I'm so inspired by, by how you have flipped it in an hour helping people. Um, and I just, I really feel like I, I want to have a further conversation with it. We'll probably be offline, but like, oh my gosh, I just feel like I want to coach you a little bit and like make sure you're okay and, and all of that. Um, oh my God, and, that's what we have clubhouse for, right? <laughs> exactly. Yes. Um, but it's like, you know, helping you choose with intention and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, so again, like all the ways that we make decisions through a place of power, like feeling empowered versus I have to, or or I should. And, um, so hopefully now that you can own your own story, um, feel fine about your own story, empowered by it, empowered by the impact that you're making as a result of who you are and what you've been through. And then also powerfully choose where you're going to share your story and what yeah. pieces of it and, and, you know, let people have their own perceptions. It's not your job to, uh, go and fix false perceptions. Um, yeah. and thankfully now it's, I'm sure we're far, you're far enough down the road that, uh, you know, they're not trolling you and coming to, you know, with their negative perceptions. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it took a long time though. And, you know, the only way I think that my online friends, my virtual friends, my communities on Facebook and, and now Clubhouse have been instrumental. I mean, figure, I don't even know these people in person except for one or two that I've actually gotten to meet in person after I met them. Um, but, you know, people out there sharing their stories and being brave is what has given me the strength to come forward. And and I just had to because it's not like I really had the choice to hide that. That's all over Google. All people have to do is put my name in Google and <laughs> yeah. there it goes. You know, so you know, um, for a long time, long time it was a lonely road. But then once I started being really active on social media, other people like you telling their stories is what gave me the courage. Yay. I love <laughs> that. Oh my gosh. So Beyond that, which amazing. So now that life is a bit more normal and you're in control and you're powered and you're making the choices. Um, I know as an entrepreneur, there's still tough times because we all have hiccups in our business. So how do you stay motivated, whether it's strategies or a mindset shift or, you know, whatever it is, how do you stay motivated and moving during those tough business times? Oh gosh. Well, the way I like to stay motivated is you know, books. I love reading books. And um, that's one way that I stay motivated. So, you know, just reading stuff about mindset. I love all those self-help books. They really do. Another thing that I've taken to very seriously lately is the power of prayer, right? Mm -hmm. Prayer. Um, I've been cultivating my relationship with God and, um, you know, before it was more like, oh, it's the universe. It's there. No, for me now it is God. I know mm-hmm. some people, um, 
well, everybody has a right to see things differently. You know, I grew up in a Catholic, um, in the Catholic church. And after I was like 17, 18, I kind of became, you know, disillusioned with it. And I just connected God with religion and, 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 and now I don't. So I've been able to, you know, now I read the Bible and I pray. Um, and another thing is, gosh, this new thing called Clubhouse where you go, in <laughs> exactly. you go into all these rooms and you listen to people, right? And their strategies and what they do and you take notes. That's yeah. been a godsend for me. Oh, you know? me too. I, um, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Extrovert in a pandemic, which I'm probably now saying on every episode of the podcast lately, but <laughs> I am so loving. I tell you like, um, one of the things I started, and maybe you'd want to do a room similar to this. It's been so fun. But I started, uh, and uh, selfishly, it was to help me with accountability. But uh, so 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm calling it the Family Business Walk, Talk, and Learn. I get up and out in the cold in Michigan and walk for an hour to an hour and a half, and I bring my my peeps with me. And I sit there and get to talk to people all around the world and talk business strategy and coach and all that. And, uh, you know, I'm losing weight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really? How long do you guys go? Um, we go for either an hour or hour and a half, okay. depending on my schedule. Um, like today was an hour and a half, but we, just Monday through Friday, we do that. And then, well, yesterday we just did an ad hoc one. I don't want to commit on like Saturday or Sunday to pop it in there. Because sometimes my husband and I also just want to go on a walk ourselves. Yeah. But um, but anyway, it's been so fun. And like some people, like I had a guy in the UK today, it was his lunch hour. And he um, he was on some kind of equipment. He's training for a marathon. So we sat there and talked business, you know, from the US to the UK. So it is so fun. I love Clubhouse for- I um, do too. I do yeah. too. And I'm helping my clients with it as well. Oh, I'm and, sure. You know, I got in there and I'm totally into it and I'm trying to bring my clients on with me as well. So I love it. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sure that you're providing great value and yeah, there's just, there's stuff to soak in and then there's so much value or an opportunity to give value too. So, yeah, absolutely. so it's such a high vibe place and I hope that the energy stays the same, uh, you know, as it gets bigger and bigger. Yeah, um, do you have any specific books that you recommend? I know this is on well, the fly. Maybe you don't know that. Yeah, that's on the fly. Well, you know what? My favorite book of all time is Think and Grow Rich. Uh-huh. And I've, I really loved The Alchemist. And now I'm just starting to read Brene Brown stuff. Um, I can't remember the title of the first oh, yeah. book, ever, but yeah, I'm sure you know who Brene Brown because yes. everybody recommends her yes. stuff. And yes. So uh, somebody said, I need to read her book. So I just got the book. Oh, and I forgot The Go-Giver. Oh, Dude, yes. By Bob Berg. I just yeah. remember clubhouse a few weeks ago. He's a fantastic guy. Yes. Yep. I have all those, all of his books too. Yep. Well, you have, a, that's a great list. So those will definitely be in the show notes as well. Um, so just, you've already shared so much and I so appreciate it. What words of wisdom or inspiration do you have for others who want to make their own impact? Well, what I would say is, um, words of wisdom is, you know, for my clients, I usually talk about, you know, it's never too late to make your impact in the world, right? And you just have to do it in a way that feels good to you. And there's no right way or no right way or no wrong way. You don't have to do it like everybody else is doing it. Just be yourself. You have plenty, even if you're older like we are, you have plenty of wisdom to offer the world. And you know, we are always appreciated for it. So go ahead and be yourself and go for it and never think that it's too late because it never is. Woo! I love that. Awesome. Thank you for, uh, for ending us off on such a positive note. So again, Francine, thank you so much. I'm so grateful that uh, this podcast brought us together. I look forward to connecting with you further and please reach out to Francine, check out her services. Uh, she's an amazing inspiration and she can help you find that nice balance of vulnerability and uh, utilizing social media in a powerful way to build your business. So uh, this is episode 183 and you can find the show notes. We'll have links to uh, her website 
And also the books that she just recommended will be there and other little tidbits from our talk today. So to find the show notes, go to defeatthedrama.com, click on the podcast site, and then go to episode 183. And um, also, I want to just throw out there, if you are struggling with some kind of family business challenge or personal situation where you're fighting fear, uh, reach out to me. I encourage you go to defeatthedrama.com forward slash call. Yes, I'm offering time on my calendar right there. Within 15 minutes, you're going to get a breakthrough. So whether it's a business breakthrough or a personal breakthrough, um, you're going to have 30 minutes on my calendar, but uh, you'll get that insight or strategy within 15. So take me up on that. So I look forward to connecting more. Please, as Francine said, get out there, make your bigger, bolder impact. Thanks for listening and have a great day. Thank you. 